Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be talking about using the fifth ward, uh, which is the tail guard. Okay, ward meaning guard. So basically we're talking about the fifth guard of I-33, which is a tail guard. Uh, when most of the time when people use it, um, I see them mostly use it using it to hide their sword, right? If I have the sword behind me like this, uh, you can't see it. You don't know if I'm going to attack from here or if I'm going to attack from here. Uh, so they use it as a means to hide their sword or hide the angle of their attacks. Or sometimes they'll just use it to, to buy some time and just do a stretch, okay? And then follow up with, with an attack. So that's how I mostly see people using it. Um, but a way that I use it uh, is kind of like as the terminal point to a pull-through cut, okay? So we're going to talk about what a pull-through cut is uh, in this video. So first, let's talk about the other type of cut so that you can understand why the pull-through cut is different. So most of my other cuts, uh, they pretty much end in the long point, right? So if I'm here and I cut, okay, I make a cut to the head there, what's happening is the sword basically terminates at this long point, right, which is the seventh ward, okay? So it terminates there, and then from there I can turn it over into another cut, which is also terminating in a long point, and then again I can cut here, which is also terminating in the long point, okay? Um, so that's how most of my of my cuts end up. They, they end up terminating in this long point with the arm fully extended, um, and one of the reasons why that, why I'm able to do that is I can see what I'm cutting at, right? So in this guard here, right, there's four quadrants, right? You've got, you know, one, two, three, and then four, okay? So as I stand here, you got one, two, uh, three, and four over here. Um, so the fourth quadrant is this quadrant over here. That's basically on the sword side. Um, that's the side that I, I normally cannot see through my shield, right? So as I stand here, right, okay, I can see here, I can see here, I can see here. I can't see what's over here. Okay? I cannot see what's over there. Um, I can kind of guess what's over there based on what I see up here. So if I see a head and shoulders up here, I can guess that there's probably a leg someplace down here. Um, so because I can see one, two, and three, I'm, I'm able to make my cuts and know where they're going to terminate, right? right? So even when I'm cutting at the legs, a lot of times I'm not looking directly at the leg, but I can kind of see it through my peripheral vision. Okay? I have a sense, even though I'm looking up here, I, can, I have a sense of where that is. If the person moves, I can see it. If they move in on me or if they move out, I can adjust. Now, a lot of times if somebody is, let's say somebody is, is moved in on me or I move on in on them, the way that I'm going to make my cut is going to be a little bit, a little bit different. So, depending on the distance, right? Um, as I make my cut, you know, I can, I can, um, you know, I can, I can determine if like this is going to be where I'm going to hit, or if this is going to be where I'm going to hit, and you know, basically how I power through the sword is going to be slightly different because again, I can see where the person is, I know where the cut is gonna terminate, right? And even, you know, again, even if I cut there, right? I end in the long point, I turn over to this, end, to this side of the body, again, I'm ending up in the long point. So most of my cuts end up in the long point. However, when I'm cutting here, down here, which would be basically this area down there, okay? I cannot see where that leg is, okay? So I have to make a cut right in such a way because i that i don't know when and where it's going to hit so and i have to also um uh, account for the fact that it may not hit anything so i have to throw my cut in such a way that i'm going to basically if it wherever it hits or doesn't hit i'm going to basically pull back and end up back here okay right, and i've talked about this in other videos sometimes i'll come up and then from there bring it down but again I, I cannot see this area over here that I am attacking, right? Because basically that area is over here. So as I make that cut, I'm pulling through and I'm ending up in this long point as I'm, I'm sorry, I'm ending up in this tail guard as I'm cutting because I don't know 
if I'm gonna hit, if I'm not gonna hit, at what point I'm gonna hit. Uh, so that's the benefit of the pull-through cut. Uh, it allows you to make a cut into an area that you can't see and you don't know exactly at what point it's gonna hit or not gonna hit. And, and basically, you're making this cut with the intention of pulling through and ending up back here, okay? So that's the pull-through cut, okay? Into an area that I cannot see, okay? That's gonna end back here, regardless of whether I hit or do not hit. Now, another way I have found this useful is if I have somebody that is basically, um, let me extend this, right? We're, pre we're pretending that this is a sword here with a sword arm back here. So when a lot of times when people see a large seal shield like this, they know that I cannot see what's in this area over here, okay? So what they will sometimes do is they'll stand there, right? And they'll basically threaten the point. Basically, they'll, they'll point their sword just below my shield where I can't see their tip. And the idea there is that because I cannot see their sword, I'm either gonna drop my shield to look at it, either this way or open up this way, and then when I do, basically they're gonna bring the tip around, right? So, add, so they'll stand here like this. If I open up that shield, they'll basically bring it around like this, okay? Um, or if I lower it, they'll come over the top and thrust me like that. So they're basically threatening the tip, okay? Uh, into an area that I cannot see, hoping that I will move the shield out of the way, uh, and then they'll, they'll attack me. So one of the counters that I have found to this is, as I stand here, right, so right now, as I stand like this, I cannot see this pole over here, right? I cannot see it, right? So as I stand here like this, I cannot see that pole. I know it's there, I just don't know exactly where it is. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a pull-through cut, right? I'm gonna make a pull-through cut and come all the way out like this. So I'm basically attacking their arm because, because I have a good sense of where it is, but not exactly where it is. So I don't know exactly when and where this is going to make contact, and, but I'm making it with the intention of pulling it through, okay? All right, pulling it through and then following up with another cut, okay? Because maybe I'll hit them, maybe I won't. Uh, if anything, you'll get them to stop threatening me with the point uh, in an area um, that I can't see. Uh, so if I do that enough times to them, uh, They'll, they'll, they'll stop doing that, right? They'll start, they'll, they'll think of something else to do. Because to me, that's especially annoying, right? Somebody's got a tip below my shield line, so I can't see it. That's gonna make me feel really uncomfortable. Um, and th most people will basically naturally just, well, most people that are not experienced are gonna open up to look at it, and that's when they're gonna get killed, right? They're gonna open up to look for that tip, and then boom, they're gonna get hit. Um, somebody that's more experienced is basically gonna back up and then look for it, okay? But the thing is, if you back up, it basically takes you out of the fight. So if you know somebody basically has their arm extended, right? You know where their arm is, um, why not take advantage of that, right? So if they're, if they're threatening you with the tip just below your, your shield line, you have a good sense of where their arm is because their arm is usually gonna be, right? If you look at my arm here, even if you're having a shield, you can see it's gonna basically protrude somewhere in this area over here, right? So I can, I know I'm gonna attack somewhere in this area over here. I don't know exactly where I'm gonna hit, so I'm gonna make this pass-through cut, bring it, pull it back to the tail guard, and then basically immediately throw back either to the head or throw back to the leg, depending on what, you know, how I see them move, okay? Um, so that's the, uh, um, that's the, the pull-through a pull through cut uh, into a, t a tail guard, right? Because we're basically, we're, we're, pa we're just momentarily passing through it into this tail guard and then immediately, um, you know, striking. Uh, and this, this can be a very powerful blow because normally when we fight, we fight here like this because this gives us that, that little bit of defense, right? I have the extra defense here. So normally most of my attacks are basically powered from here. But if I pull through, end up here, now I've got a lot more space uh, to accelerate the sword. The sword's gonna come in uh, a lot faster, uh, and um, you know, it's gonna come in a lot faster, and it's gonna, it's gonna hit a lot harder. Uh, so, something for you guys to think about. Uh, so that's a, a pull-through cut, okay? And it can either be to the sword, you know, or it can be to the leg. A pull-through cut into the tail guard, 
and then follow it up by an immediate cut uh, either to the head or to the leg. Okay? Uh, drop some comments below. Let me know what you guys think. I'll talk to you all soon.